cheat days. Seemingly every fitness influencer and gym enthusiast does them. Heck, I did regular cheat days too, but I stopped three years ago. Why? Because they're actually bad for your health. So let's talk about cheat days. The good, the bad and the ugly. Just to be on the same page, what is a cheat day exactly? Or at least what do I mean with a cheat day? A cheat day is a day where you ditch all your dietary restrictions and no food is off limits. Basically, you can eat as much as you want of whatever you want. And most of the times that's either sweets or fast foods or generally any food that is high in calories, high in fats and high in sugar. And a cheat meal is more or less the same as a cheat day, with the exception that it only applies to a single meal instead of an entire day. So why do I actually think that cheat days are bad? People like Dwayne The Rock Johnson do them every week. Uh, look at them. Does The Rock look unhealthy or unfit to you? To me, he doesn't. He's in better shape than 99% of all people. And following that logic, cheat days can't be bad, can they? Well, it's not that simple. Because there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't see. You only see The Rock's cheat meals, but not that he also has a coach who makes sure his diet and training are on point. You see the massive number of calories The Rock eats in a single meal, but you don't see that he runs a very strict diet during the rest of the week. And you think that he mindlessly eats whatever he wants and how much he wants, when in reality, his cheat meals are carefully planned out to fit into his weekly calorie allowance. And this is exactly problem number one. Cheat days can undo your deficit. With the high calorie foods that most people eat on their cheat days, it's super easy to overeat. And not just by a little bit, but massively. Just look at how many YouTube videos there are about epic 10,000, 20,000, or even 50,000 calorie cheat days. And from an analysis of Instagram posts, a research team from the University of Toronto has found that cheat meals usually contain anything between 1,000 and 9,000 calories. And it doesn't really surprise me. From the items on the thumbnail on this video, the ice cream top alone is worth around 1000 calories. And you bet I can eat that in a single sitting. Adding in some Haribo's maybe or M&M's, you can easily rack up 2000 or 3000 calories without feeling that you actually ate something. And if you overeat that much, you'll probably undo your deficit and end up at maintenance calories at best or even in a slight surplus at worst. Meaning that all the dieting and willpower and suffering during the last week was for nothing. So yeah, if you're not paying attention to what you eat and how much you eat on your cheat day, they will end up hurting your progress, not helping it. But there's another reason why I think cheat days are bad, which is that they can act as a gateway to eating disorders. Remember that research team from before that analyzed the Instagram cheat meal posts? According to their analysis, most cheat meals posted to Instagram qualify as an objective binge eating episode. Just let that sink in for a moment. On top of that, cheat meals or cheat days are often used to manage intense food cravings that result from a very restrictive diet during the week. But in contrast to what you might think, cheat meals and overeating don't actually stop these cravings. On the contrary, they only add fuel to an existing fire. Because in that moment, your body craves these calorie-dense, high-sugar, high-fat meals, it's very tempting to just keep eating and eating until you end up overeating. And what do you do next? I mean, probably what most people would do, either exercise more or eat less, or both of them, in an attempt to make up for the overeating on the cheat day. And guess what happens when you starve yourself during the week after a cheat day? You guessed it, your body reacts with intense food cravings again. And because it's your cheat day, you probably give in to these cravings and overeat again, which makes you feel guilty again, meaning that you're eating less or exercising more the following week in another attempt to make up for this overeating episode as well. And thus, the cycle repeats itself. 
And this isn't just some theory I just came up with. Sadly, I do have some first-hand experience in this. Around three years ago, I wanted to lose some weight for my wedding and it wasn't anything wild, three, four, or maybe five kilograms. So nothing too crazy. The only problem was that I only had five weeks left until the big day. So what did I do? Well, I decided to do this very low calorie, low carb diet and then also pair it with intermittent fasting. And in hindsight, this is probably the worst combination of diets that ever existed. Please do not do this at home. But at the time, I thought I was a genius because on paper that would lead to instant weight loss results just as I wanted them. And I actually managed to stick to my diet during the first week, at least until the weekend came along. By that point, my cravings and my hunger were so intense that I just, I just couldn't sustain this diet any longer. So I gave in and I binged. So <laughs> probably something like four to 5,000 calories per sitting and also during the night because I was so ashamed that my fiance would catch me eating that much. So it wasn't really a good place I was in. And needless to say, I felt super guilty and disgusted about myself. And I also now had only four weeks left to lose the weight that I wanted. So what did stupid past me do? Well, restrict my calories even more in the following week because we have this goal that we want to achieve, right? And we only have four weeks left. Yeah, of course that wasn't sustainable either. And I managed a few days on that very low, very restrictive diet until I had these massive cravings again and I just couldn't sustain it any longer and I binged again and to make up for it and because I only had three weeks now left I starved myself again during the week which ended in another binge eating episode on the weekend and you can probably guess where this is going. Eventually I ended up being three kilograms heavier on my wedding day than before my short weight loss journey. Well fucking done. But this constant cycle and this constant ping pong between starving myself and binge eating wasn't the only thing that was really messed up during that time. Another thing I noticed is that I didn't just feel bad after a binge eating episode because I had overeaten. I also felt bad because the weight went up on the scale the next day. Because when you overeat, be it because it's your cheat day or be it because you're in a binge eating episode as I was, your body will hold on to quite a lot of water and that water weight will show on the scale, at least temporarily. But if you don't know that, you might think that you just gained one or two kilograms of fat overnight and this will make you take some measures during the following week, most likely restricting your calorie intake or exercising excessively. I think I'm starting to see a pattern here, huh? Another thing I noticed with me is that I didn't just obsess about food and what I eat and how much I eat and when I eat it, uh, but I also started labeling and categorizing them. Things that you can eat during the week and things that you can only eat on your cheat days. In other words, healthy things and unhealthy things or good foods and bad foods. And this is a very destructive mindset to have if you ask me. Because unless you're allergic to it, no food should be labeled as bad or forbidden. And yes, fries or donuts aren't good for your health in large quantities, but water isn't either. It's always the dose that makes the poison. It just so happens that fewer fries or fewer donuts are needed to reach the healthy dose than with water or an apple. All in all, I think cheat days can lead to a very unhealthy relationship with food. I'm not saying it will always lead to an eating disorder, because it won't. Some people can incorporate cheat meals into their daily routine and into their diet and they're just fine. However, there is a non-zero risk attached to cheat days for developing an eating disorder. And especially if you've had different eating disorders in the past, just like me, then you're at a higher risk. So this paints a very dark picture of cheat days, doesn't it? Is there anything, just anything good about cheat days? Well, yes, there is. Otherwise we won't be talking about the good, the bad and the ugly. 
However, it's not really cheat days that I mean, but rather diet breaks and refeeds. Refeeds are similar to cheat days in that you bump up your calorie intake for one or two days of the week, usually the weekend. However, the big difference to cheat days is that you only increase your calorie intake up to maintenance calories, so you don't overeat. On the other hand, diet breaks describe complete breaks, like a vacation from your diet, meaning that after dieting continuously for some weeks, maybe a month or so, you will have one or two weeks where you increase your calorie intake to maintenance before you go back to dieting again. And both refeeds and diet breaks can help with your weight loss, or at least don't hurt them, as several studies have found. For example, a 2020 study from Campbell and colleagues looked into the effect of refeeds on dieting success. In their study, one group dieted continuously with a 25% deficit each day, while the other group, the refeed group, was in a 35% deficit during the week and increased their calories to maintenance on the weekends. The net caloric deficit was the same for each group. After seven weeks, both groups lost the same amount of weight, which isn't really surprising because calories in versus calories out ultimately determines how much weight you will gain or lose. However, the refeed group lost significantly more fat than the group who dieted every day. Also, the refeed group retained more muscle mass, probably because they had more energy for their workouts. And the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you will burn at rest, meaning that the refeed group also protected their resting metabolic rate a little bit better. So all in all, the findings from this study suggest that having these refeeds can help with workout performance, muscle retention, and protecting your metabolism. However, another study from last year came to a slightly different conclusion when it comes to diet breaks. In this study by Pios and colleagues, young adults either dieted continuously for 12 weeks straight or they alternated between three weeks of dieting and one week at maintenance calories. In the end, both groups saw the same amount of weight loss but also the same amount of fat loss and the same amount of muscle retention. So in this study, the diet breaks didn't lead to a more favorable body composition in the intermittent dieting group. However, the diet break group reported a lower hunger, fewer cravings, and feeling overall more satisfied with their diet. So if nothing else, these diet breaks could have a positive effect on diet adherence, especially over the long term. So in summary, these controlled planned out refeeds or diet breaks can promote diet adherence by decreasing hunger and cravings, improve performance in the gym, which will help prevent muscle loss and protect metabolism during a dieting phase, mostly because of the increased muscle retention. But before you get too hyped, that's only the case if you do not overeat during these diet breaks or refeeds. Which brings me to the last point of this video, how I think you should go about dieting and weight loss to prevent all the suffering and the cravings and the overeating in the first place. Personally, I do not believe in cheating on your diet because you wouldn't cheat on your spouse either, at least I hope so. So why would you cheat on your diet? If you're not content or satisfied with your current diet, then why not just end things and look for something else, something that you're happier with? Because I believe that your relationship with food should be a healthy one, meaning that your diet should be sustainable and satisfying enough so you don't need a cheat day in the first place. Otherwise, your caloric deficit is too aggressive or your diet is too restrictive. And although the refeed study and the diet break study from before sound very compelling, there is actually not a lot of research on that topic, at least not yet. So if you want to have something that is like a cheat day, then I would recommend going with a refeed instead. So kind of a cheat day, but you only go up to maintenance calories. However, personally, I prefer a continuous dieting approach with a small deficit of maybe 10 or 15 percent. So let's say you maintain on 2000 calories per day, then lowering your food intake to 1800 calories would already do the trick. As a side note, yes, with such a small deficit, it will definitely take you longer to achieve your weight loss goals. However, 
A smaller deficit is more sustainable, so you're more likely to stick with it and less likely to yo-yo back to your original weight after your diet is over. Plus, slower weight loss is actually better for body composition after a diet as more muscle mass is retained and as a result more fat is burned. But apart from how fast or slow you should lose weight, other things that you should take care of is adequate protein intake because protein is very satiating and it will also help keep all that valuable muscle mass that you have. And second, I would keep lifting weights because this is ultimately what tells your body that you still need that muscle mass. So it should rather use fat as an energy source instead. And most importantly, nothing should be off limits. And I mean nothing, again, unless you're allergic to it. Because you can literally eat anything, burgers, pizza, broccoli, chicken breast, donuts, it doesn't matter. As long as you are in a caloric deficit, you are going to lose weight. So don't unnecessarily restrict yourself and make yourself miserable during a weight loss phase. But that was it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. And if you did, then please leave me a like on this video. Also hit that subscribe button. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye.